Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to a sort of mini tutorial thing. Why am I doing this with my hands? I don't know. Um, shooting boards. These are basically the most useful uh, devices. We have to do a video. What is the most useful device in a, in a workshop? Jigs and and tips and tricks because there's many and I'm sure you have many more ideas than I do. Uh, anyway, the shooting board is a basic, basic device with which to get very good joints on thinner stock, thinner material. And uh, very basically, it is a piece of wood that is nice and flat, another one next to it, and a stop, like so. And what it means is you can take your guitar top or back or sides, um, even more useful for acoustic builders where you're talking two or three mil. And uh, it holds up against the stop and your plane is held square to, to the stock and gives you a nice 90 degree cut. Now, <clears throat> the one thing I've forgotten to do is secure it to my workbench somehow, so I need to sort that out. Okay. So I'm just gonna put this Put this in the end vice. That is not going to move anywhere now. All right, so what we have here is one of the Burl Poplar tops. We bought recently a load of um, Poplar giant planks and we've processed it down. Half of it is for you guys, so it's available on the store. Uh, crimsonguitars.com and half of it is going to be turned into guitars here because well it's lovely stuff um, so there we go go check that out I think it's roughly half the price of anywhere else I'm not entirely sure why we've done that but uh, I'm not going to argue with it now the basics I I do one top at a time or one side at a time uh, basically, I'll show you how to figure out whether you're actually going straight or not, but uh, a lot of people espouse the idea that you do both of them together and then it, it works perfectly. It takes the same amount off so your book match will be, will be accurate and, and the same basically. However, I think that if you are not working properly and you've got both of them together, so for example, you are making a hump in the middle, then you're basically doubling the error and you've got double the stock to take off in order to get it flat again. Whereas if you do one at a time and you are careful, then uh, you're pretty much guaranteed a good result. Now, as far as I'm concerned, if you don't have uh, a dedicated shooting board plane, I have one but I'm selling it and I'm slightly torn about that. <laughs> yeah, very tempted to keep that tall. If, if you don't have a dedicated shooting board plane, oh poops, come on then, I'm going to show you this plane. This was not planned, but why the hell not? Okay, so this is a dedicated shooting board plane. This is an old Stanley number 51, and, uh, and it's beautiful. They are rare and collectible and awesome. Now, the reason why, there are several reasons. It cuts on the slice, so your blade is going through at an angle, and, uh, or skew mouth, basically, and that is, that is very, very cool. It means that you do get a better cut with it. But also, the handle is designed specifically to work well like that. I'm, I'm even more tempted to keep this now. My side gig is selling vintage tools and uh, <laughs> Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we'll see. It's on eBay at the moment, but it might not be. Anyway, <coughs> it 
If you don't have one of those, a number seven. This is my baby, I've had this for 10, 15 years or so. And uh, instead of having the nice handle there, which is supremely comfortable, uh, by the way, Lee Nielsen and I think maybe Veritas or one or the other do make a modern version of that uh, that isn't particularly expensive. And if you're doing lots of shooting, uh, well, it's all about buying new tools, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, so on this plane, I'm holding it here. I'm not holding the handle because I'd obviously scuff my knuckles off. Okay, so that's not taking very much material. It is important with a shooting plane that your blade is sharpened square and flat. <clears throat> with, with other planes, depending on what you're doing, scrub planes are the, the extreme example, you will sharpen your blade with a curve in it so that it only cuts at a certain point. This, you want cutting across uh, and square. So double check it, sight down the plane if you do. I just use my fingers very gently because I don't want to delaminate my fingers. Uh, check that that's poking out square. And off we go. Okay, so let me break this down for you. When you're planing, the front of your plane is basically dictating what is straight. So when I start, I'm pushing with my hand. So that's straight. And as I go towards the middle, I'm using my forearm here to rest the back of the plane on the section that I've planed with the front. And that should result in a nice flat um, joint. Now there is one other tool, and I think this is sacrilegious, to be frank. You can use uh, a leveling beam. So, this is one of our Crimson Guitars leveling beams. <sighs> I don't know, I'm a, plain, I'm a plain guy. However, leveling beam, same sort of thing. And uh, you end up with, with a joint that is nice and flat, hopefully. The second piece. So, Using a leveling beam is good for one thing. Well, actually, you know, I'm an opinionated bastard, really. That's actually a little bit more comfortable, a little bit easier than using my number seven. I just love my number seven and I prefer the finish that a blade gives you. However, and I like shavings rather than dust. You can see here that the wood while pretty, the grain is every which way. So whatever I do with my plane, uh, I'm going to have some problems, really. So this one will start from scratch again. You can hear it taking off material at each end. And you can see I'm pushing down and then resting the, the rear, the heel of the plane uh, down on the wood using pressure from my forearm.
There we go. Now, this is the fun bit. Clamps. There are, there are alternative methods for doing this, but uh, I like, I like these. Uh, when jointing a five mil, seven mil top, sort of a drop top type thing, uh, I will, as much as possible, only use three clamps. If, if a joint isn't going to glue together just with the pressure of your fingers holding it, then the joint isn't good enough and uh, you need to go back and start again. In a real world application, I would have chopped this off square so I have uh, nice edges to uh, hold against uh, the clamps. But that's it. I mean, it's literally finger tight. And uh, there we go. To a point where I'm actually adjusting. Hmm. I'm adjusting where the wood is proud, etc. Just by just by pushing down. Two clamps there. One in the middle. And that really is all you need. The one in the middle is to stop. The one in the middle on the top is to stop it pinging closed, which happens every now and then. In the interests of uh, completion, let's just get this glued up. Thin coat of glue. Put it on and then rub a little bit. That gets rid of any air pockets and issues like that. And then I'm pushing it down over where the clamp is and the clamp is working as my reference surface, which uh, allows me to get this pretty much perfect there. Hmm, let's... There we go. If your fingers aren't getting sticky, you're doing it wrong. And there's an indication of the kind of pressure that I'm talking about. This is poplar. This is a relatively soft wood. And yet I'm only slightly deforming the outside edge here with how much pressure I'm putting on. It's, it's not immense. And there we go. That, that top is, is good to go and will be jointed for a lifetime. And there we have it. Thank you very much for watching. I sincerely hope this has been of use to you. If you have a better or different or better method of doing any of this, please get in touch. There are a million ways to skin this cat that is called Luthuri. Why, why did I say that? I need to have a cat called Luthuri now. Um, so yeah, please let us know in the comments below. Click like, subscribe, share with your friends, especially non-guitar making friends, because they're gonna go, what the hell are you showing this crazy tattooed man with me for? I don't know, go away. And then you'll lose your friends and then you'll spend more time in the workshop. Because who needs a social life when you have a workshop? Thanks for watching. I love you guys. Be back soon. Cheers. Mm -hmm.